Have you ever wondered how an air compressor works? You've probably seen them at gas stations, in garages, or inside big industrial facilities, pumping up tires, powering tools, or running complex machinery. But behind that loud humming box is a surprisingly elegant process, a blend of physics, mechanics, and engineering that transforms ordinary air into a powerful energy source. In this video, we're diving deep into the heart of air compressors to understand how they function, what makes them essential in so many industries, and why they're more versatile than you might think. Let's explore, right here, on History of Simple Things. At its core, an air compressor is a machine that increases the pressure of air by reducing its volume. That concept comes straight from physics, specifically Boyle's Law, which states that the pressure of a gas tends to increase as the volume of the container decreases, assuming temperature remains constant. Compressors take in ambient air, the same air we breathe, and pack it into a smaller space, thereby increasing its pressure. This pressurized air can then be stored in a tank or delivered directly to tools and machines that use it as an energy source. What makes compressed air so useful is that it's clean, relatively safe, and incredibly flexible. It can be used to drive pneumatic tools, operate paint sprayers, clean surfaces, and even power HVAC systems or large-scale manufacturing processes. To understand how an air compressor works, it's important to break down its main components. First, there's the intake valve, which allows ambient air to enter the compressor. Then there's the compression mechanism. This can vary depending on the type of compressor, but its job is always to squeeze the air and reduce its volume. The storage tank holds the pressurized air until it's needed. You also have a motor or engine that powers the entire system along with a series of cooling fins, lubrication systems, and pressure switches to maintain safe and efficient operation. Each of these parts works in concert to ensure that air is brought in, compressed, and delivered at the right pressure and volume for the job. Now let's talk about the types of air compressors. They generally fall into two main categories positive displacement compressors, and dynamic compressors. Positive displacement compressors, such as reciprocating piston compressors and rotary screw compressors, work by mechanically reducing the volume of air. A piston compressor, for example, uses a piston driven by a crankshaft to compress the air inside a cylinder. As the piston moves down, it draws air in. As it moves up, it squeezes the air into a smaller space, increasing its pressure. On the other hand, rotary screw compressors use two meshing helical screws to compress the air. These are often used in industrial settings because they can run continuously and handle large volumes of air with minimal maintenance. Dynamic compressors, like centrifugal compressors, use a rotating impeller to accelerate the air and then slow it down in a diffuser, converting velocity into pressure. These are typically used in high volume applications, like HVAC systems in skyscrapers or jet engines where you need a continuous flow of pressurized air. Each type of compressor has its own strengths and ideal use cases, but the core principle remains the same, reduce volume, increase pressure. Let's walk through a simplified step-by-step -step example using a reciprocating piston air compressor, one of the most common types. Step 1. When the compressor starts, the intake valve opens and the piston moves down the cylinder, drawing in ambient air. Step 2. The intake valve closes and the piston begins moving upward, compressing the air trapped inside the cylinder. As the piston reaches the top of its stroke, 
the compressed air is forced through a one-way valve into a storage tank. This tank holds the pressurized air until you're ready to use it. The motor then continues cycling the piston up and down, drawing in more air and compressing it. Once the air in the tank reaches a preset pressure, usually monitored by a pressure switch, the compressor shuts off automatically. When the pressure drops below a certain level, the motor kicks back on, repeating the process. This cycle continues as long as the tool or machine is using air. But compressing air isn't always as simple as it sounds. Air naturally contains moisture, dust, and other contaminants, which can damage pneumatic tools or industrial equipment. That's why many compressors are equipped with air dryers, filters, and lubricators to condition the air before it reaches the end-use application. Moisture can especially be a problem because as air is compressed, its temperature rises, and when it cools down again, water can condense inside the tank and hoses. To prevent rust and corrosion, manufacturers often include drain valves to remove this moisture. Safety is another key concern. Compressing air generates a lot of heat and pressure, so components like pressure relief valves and thermal protection are essential to prevent overheating or dangerous pressure buildup. So where do we see air compressors in action? Pretty much everywhere. In auto repair shops, they're used to power impact wrenches, inflate tires, and spray paint. On construction sites, they drive jackhammers and nail guns. In factories, they operate conveyor belts, robotic arms, and production lines. Even your refrigerator uses a type of compressor to pressurize and circulate refrigerant. In hospitals, medical-grade compressors provide clean, dry air for breathing systems and surgical tools. The versatility of compressed air often called the fourth utility after electricity, water, and gas, makes it an indispensable part of modern life. Air compressors work by taking in atmospheric air, compressing it to increase its pressure, and storing or delivering that air for practical use. It's a brilliant use of mechanical energy and physics, turning something invisible, air, into a powerful, controlled force. So the next time you hear that familiar whirring sound at a workshop or job site, you'll know there's more going on than meets the eye. You'll be witnessing a perfect dance of valves, pistons, and pressure, all working together to turn air into energy. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.